Hello, and welcome to 2012. My name is Jordan Halsey, and in this first in a series of new videos, we're going to be exploring V-Ray for Maya. We're going to begin by exploring lighting, and then we're going to move on to shading and rendering, and then finally how to render out multi-pass EXRs so that you can composite them in Nuke, much like we would do in Mental Ray. With that said, let's just get quickly started. You can see here that I've got a basic generic Maya scene. I've got uh, a few different styles of glasses, some spheres. We'll be moving them around and whatnot. A cube with some extruded faces, and we're sitting inside of a solid cube environment, and there's a camera. And the cube has some beveled edges just to give us some soft soft edges for lighting like you would see in a photographer's psych. So uh, let's just look through the camera so that we can see what the scene is. And the first thing that we're going to want to do, obviously, is make sure that V-Ray is up and running. And you can just make sure it's in your settings, preferences, plugin manager, and V-Ray is on. So we have all of our V-Ray options, as well as we can see that we've got it loaded up in the render settings to render using V-Ray. Uh, the settings here are pretty low. There's no uh, indirect illumination at all. And uh, under settings, uh, just for my sampling, I've got it uh, set to adaptive DMC, which is what I think you want to use. And we've got it set to very low, one and two, and with I've even uh, with a pretty low uh, noise threshold. Uh, the noise threshold is going to define the amount of noise before it's going to keep on sampling. Uh, you can lower that to get higher quality results, and with not necessarily having to take this to extreme uh, numbers. But for right now, that's what we're going to leave it at. Under the common tab, I've got used the V-Ray frame buffer, which you know is kind of slightly temperamental sometimes. Even though I have hide render view off, I notice that it kind of behaves wonky, but for the most part, it works. So uh, with that said, there is no light in the scene. So that's the first thing that we're going to want to do. And in this lesson specifically, we're going to be studying area lights. So let's just do that. So under the Create menu, Lights, let's create a V-Ray rectangular light and you'll see a rectangular the with the defaults pops up and we've got a perfectly square light here and if we look at the settings it's set to white and it's got an intensity multiplier of 30 so I think before we do anything the first thing that we should do is well I'm gonna look through it I'm gonna kinda of position it just really behind the camera like that nothing uh, too exciting and let's put it back to the camera view and let's snap off a rendering and see what we get with the, just the bare defaults. With that I'm going to snap off a rendering. So as you can see it's rendering pretty fast. From now on I'll be pausing it uh, and you can see here we go this is your uh, default area light in this scene at this scale with an intensity multiplier of 30 applied to it. So uh, with that, what I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to kind of put this, position this in here so we can do a few different kinds of light tweaks to see what's going on here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is obviously we're going to want to bump up that intensity, but what I'm going to want to do is we're going to want to work in multiples right now of this 30 so that we can use that as our base to see what's going on. So I'm just going to double it and I'm going to put it up to 60 and then I'm going to snap off another render. So I'm snapping off another render and I'll be back when it's finished or it's, it's actually finishing pretty quick and we can already see the results. So we're obviously we have doubled the amount of light in the scene uh, and we're getting a little bit more distinguishing characteristics that we can see etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So with that what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of move this out of the way and I'm going to come back into perspective view and I'm going to grab this light Let me just put on wireframe for a second so I can see the light. There we go. And in the channel box, rather than using the light multiplier, I'm going to actually set it back to 30 and I'm going to double it. I'm going to go back to the attribute editor. See, I'm going to lower that to back down to 30, but I've doubled the size of the light just in case you didn't follow that. And I'm going to snap off another render. Now remember, this is this is the render from the light where it was set at 60 and now let's see what it's set at, at twice the size 
but back down to a 30 exposure, all right? So let's just render that. So basically what you can see is you can see that one, the light is actually kind of getting a little bit softer. And number two, that you can see that the intensity is kind of a little bit more focused because the light is softer and it's a little bit brighter because the light is bigger. So there's a direct relationship between the size of the light and the intensity of the light and between the softness and the hardness of the light. So the first thing that I want to explore is some hard light. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually shrink this light down now, super small, right? So let's go back to the layer editor and instead of like, one. Let's take it down to like a point two. So now you can see we have this real tiny little light, right? And let's set this intensity up to like something like 500. Now you have to understand that V-rays, because it's a physically based light, uh, light all lights are going to behave in a physical manner, which is that you're going to get that n squared fall off and whatever the math, the correct mathematical formula for how light is going to fall off in the real world. So sometimes you're going to end up, depending upon the scale of your scene, with some lights that could potentially have, you know, huge, you're going to have to pump it way, way up. Okay, so with that said, let's take a look and see what's going on here. I'm going to snap off another render and let's look at the difference. Well, with the light size at a scale of 0.2 and an intensity multiplier of 500, you can see that we're just simply not getting enough light into the scene. So let's just raise this up higher to a number like 10,000 and let's take a look and see what we get. So I'm going to snap off another render here. And you can see now that we're getting more light into the scene. And you can see that the shadows are pretty crisp and we have what we would call hard lighting. Let's just let that render finish and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so let's actually, I think it's still a little bit dark. So I'm just gonna pump that up to 20,000 and let's take a look and see what we get at that number. Okay, there we go. All right, I think that, that for our purposes, that's going to do something that we're going to want it to do for testing. And But before we go any further, I want to do a few tests before we start applying any materials to these surfaces so that we can see how the surfaces are going to interact with the area light. So, so number one, let's do some testing by let's change the size of this light again and let's see what happens. So I'm going to take that from a point 0.2 down to a point 0.1, okay? going to look back through the light and I'm going to snap off another render. Okay, you can see that by making the light smaller that already we're reducing the amount of light that's in the scene again because the light is smaller and intensity is tied to the size of the light. But you can also see that the shadows themselves are getting a little bit crisper around the edge. So for our case right now, I think that we're going to want that. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to put this up to something like a 60,000 and see what happens. So with that, let's just snap off another render. All right. I think that for our purposes, again, this is looking back to the same kind of intensity hue that we were getting uh, uh, with the light at 0.2 and 20,000, but again, we've got a much harder light here. The edges are real hard. Uh, the light itself is, 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 is just a hard light. So uh, with an example of good hard light, now let's take a look at some soft light and let's look at the opposite end of that spectrum. Okay, so let's just zoom back out here. And let's scale this light up instead of to a 0.1, let's make it a 10. Now obviously, or I mean I should hope that it would be obvious, but I'm pretty sure that you know that with the intensity that it's at at this point in time, 60,000, it's just going to be, we're going to render a big giant white scene. And, uh, but just so that we can see it, why not do it? There you can see, obviously, that's what you would call completely blown out. So I'm just going to pause that and we're going to lower this back down to our initial number of 500 that we had when the light was at a point 0.2. Okay, so with that said, let's just snap off another render. 
and you can see that even at 500 now that that light is a 10 it's obviously just way too intense so it just reiterates the fact that these numbers are going to be very sensitive to how large the light is I think that that's pretty clear I've set it back down to a 10 and let's take a look at the difference so you can see obviously there's a huge difference in the quality of the light that we're getting from this light at this present point in time this is a much softer light it's a much more uh, smooth shadows there's nothing crisp about it and this would be kind of like your Fresnel lighting is what they call it in the, you know in, in the movie business like they have those lights that are Fresnel so that you can just kind of open up or close up the light and soften them up uh, anyways I think that for our example of soft light now I think that that's pretty clear and I think that we understand the difference between soft and hard lighting and how to achieve that kind of effect uh, within V-Ray with an area light so with that let's just begin to explore a few of the other options within the light uh, there's not really a whole lot of options in the um, area light obviously you can turn off effect diffuse and effect specular and effect reflections these are, I guess that these are decoupled in a weird way so that if you have some specular only uh, shaders, which we would get into where you, because, you know, the truth is in a physical render, I, 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 you know, reflections and specularity are the same thing, but you can override that on a shader level so that you're getting kind of these false, you know, specular highlights that are based upon the position of the light rather than not the real world. Anyways, and then you can see that you've got your photon emission characteristics, uh, which we'll be getting into later. And, um, you know, if you want it to be a portal light, which again we'll be getting into later, and whether you want it to be uh, invisible, double sided, or, and not have any decay, I think that those are all pretty self explanatory. Uh, the other just really, you know, basic thing that this light has is that it can be, uh, instead of a actually choosing a color and the color picker, you can actually use color temperature, which I find very handy because I like to use color temperature, as, especially when I'm doing kind of contrasting cool warm shots where I want, uh, you know, certain things to be cool and certain things to be warm. It's kind of that 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 blue orange thing so let's just take a quick look at that and let's look at the exact same lighting setup but set to the defaults here at 6500 that'll be in Kelvin so that's kind of like just slightly after noonish type of lighting so let's snap that off and see what we get obviously we can see that the lighting is a lot more blue kind of like you know what you would see uh, in you know midday you know at, midday lighting right blue lighting right 6500 degrees Kelvin so there we go with that okay with the render finished we can see that we've obviously got exactly what we'd expect we've got very uh, blue light with very soft shadows kind of like a midday light which I think that truthfully would probably the shadows would be a little bit harder unless it was a very cloudy day uh, but let's take a look at what would happen if we take that down to like a 2500 now you can see that at 2500 Kelvin the lights gonna be very orange let's just snap off a render and see what that looks like so we can see that we're getting exactly what we'd expect, a very amberish lighting. Uh, it's, it's orange, uh, sunset lighting, or I mean a very extreme candle light pretty much at 2500 degrees Kelvin. Uh, and there it's very orange and obviously there's a lot of gradations between the two and you can start combining these and 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 getting you know different kind of lighting effects that way so matter of fact let's just we'll do that in a quick second just so that we can throw two area lights in so that we can get ready for our next scene where we're going to begin to explore shaders and materials so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pump this up to like a 4500 and I'm going to leave this one soft, but I'm going to lower the intensity right here to like a 5, right? So let's just see what happens when we do that. Now we're just going to be getting a lot less influence of that light and just a little tiny bit of some amberish color coming into there, right? You can see that that you can see that it's not as orange as it was before but it's still giving a little bit of a nice warm warm cast to the scene and we're not overblowing it with with light so uh, once this render is done what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually duplicate the light or actually I'm just gonna make another one so I'm gonna come back up here to create lights 
rectangular line and I'm going to set this one to be a hard line and we're going to set it to by temperature and we're going to keep it actually at 6500 and we're going to set that down in size to our point 1 that we had from before so we got that really tiny little light we're going to look through selected I'm going to zoom out over here and I'm going to kind of put it caddy corner these lights. I'm probably going to end up moving this light around a little bit because I don't like how it's kind of at the same um, same-ish angle. So I'm going to look through that one real quick and I'm going to turn around a little bit more so the lights are kind of coming at 45s off of the camera. Let's go back to the camera. So now we're looking through our camera and I'm going to pull up the outliner here so that I can select my light. I've got two lights here, rectangular light one and rectangular two. Two is our small light. I'm going to go into the attribute editor for it. Remember we set it to a size of 0.1 so we know that we're going to have to raise that intensity multiplier way up so I'm going to put it at we had 60,000 when we were getting it before when it was that small without the other light so I'm going to put this at like a 20,000 and see what we get. So let's just snap off a render. And here we go. Okay, it's rendering. Ah, there we go. So we can see that we've begun to introduce some kind of cool lighting over here from the right side. And we've got some kind of warm lighting coming over here from the left side. We've got some hard shadows coming in from our light over on the right to kind of give a nice dramatic effect and some soft light coming over from here like if there was like a glow from a candle or a, a, a fire so you know it could be a little bit more amber if it was coming from a candle light maybe I guess it could just be coming in from a window on the side but overall I think actually it's kind of like some nice even temperate lighting with maybe I want to pump up the multiplier a little bit on this one it, it could be a little bit hotter over here I feel actually Let's pump that up to a 40,000 and see what happens. Okay. There we go. I'm liking it a little bit more now. Yeah, there we go. Starting to see its influence a little bit more. see it coming in really really nicely there uh, that nice blue to uh, blue tint that's kind of like falling off with these kind of warm shadows that are being lit by the 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 warm larger soft area light and you know what I'm gonna call this lesson done so I think that we've uh, begun to explore V-Ray and some rendering techniques with area lights and looking at the color temperature and some light fall off uh, and the next lesson, uh, the next lighting lesson, we're going to be looking at IES lights, skylights, and dome lights. And uh, we're also going to be having a shading lesson where we're going to begin to explore v the V-Ray shaders within Maya, apply them to this very same scene with this lighting setup, and let's see what we get. So I'll see you in the next le lesson, and again, Happy New Year.